Hi everyone, welcome back to workshop and it's repair time again and this time I've got a nice little portable function generator used to use one of these back in the day found this one on eBay marked down as faulty and I couldn't resist picking it up it's badged as an RS components unit but I do know that these are actually Thandar devices Thandar used to make a complete range of devices including a portable oscilloscope in exactly the same case I'll put a picture on screen if I could find one of them I'd love to add it to the workbench so this particular unit says it powers up the light comes on but there's no output and it's basically a very simple device you've got the frequency adjust pot here the range selector you've got the output waveform selections there sine square or triangular wave you can switch in and out a dc offset here a power button a sweep input the output level control a minus 20 db switch the main output and a TTL output there. It's a particularly simple device. PCBWay is your one-stop solution that's been expanded from their large variety of PCB prototyping solutions to 3D printing, CNC machine work and sheet metal fabrication. PCBWay also has a growing community on their site where it's become an open platform for makers to exchange and share their ideas including the PCBWay store where some of the hottest modules can be purchased. I've been using PCBWay for years for my own products. Always reliable, always quality and always on time. So before I actually go and put power into it, let's actually open it up. Let's take a quick look inside and let's make sure there's nothing obvious or dangerous etc. before we put power into it. And here we are inside the unit and it is really, really clean. It doesn't look like anyone has been in here before. Maybe perhaps some of these electrolytic capacitors there they do look a little bit too new. These are actually the original ones here, these light blue ones. I recognise them from back in the day. But these ones down here just look a little bit too new. So maybe it's been recapped at some point in the past. But anyway, we've got the mains connector in the back there. No fuse in the back panel. And following the wiring inside, there doesn't appear to be a fuse anywhere. You've got the mains input coming straight onto the switch, the live and the neutral, before it goes off to the transformer. There's the primary side there. And the secondary side on these two red wires and a black wire just goes straight across to the PCB. And we've got a bridge rectifier down here made up of four 1N4002 diodes, I think I can see there. So you've obviously got the power supply around about there. You've got a small daughter board here, that's for mounting the output frequency adjust pot, uh, the switches etc and a few other components. And straight away I can see a problem. Let me zoom in. Over on the little daughter board we've got a test link which is open circuit and it just looks like it's been cut. So perhaps that's a, a link actually uh, for test mode during testing or calibration something like that and once it's all done maybe they just break that and that's it there are a few other links on the board using exactly the same style of jumper but this one's marked test LK for the test link and yep it's been cut open so well yes it does look like a problem first looking at it but I don't think it is now before I actually put power into it, I want to take a look at the schematic diagram that I've got for the unit and let's see what we've got in terms of the power supply because I want to immediately test those voltages before we leave it powered on for any length of time. So this is the power supply circuit here. Let me zoom in. So over at the left hand side we've got the actual transformer itself. It's a centre tapped secondary down to ground and you've got either end of that secondary winding straight onto the bridge rectifier that's going to produce a positive and negative unregulated DC and you've got a couple of bulk capacitors here one on each of those the positive side goes away along here and a negative side down here first of all it comes onto this little circuit here 
uh, you've got a 5.6 volt zener and a resistor drive in the base of this transistor here that's going to generate a plus 5 volt regulated DC supply and very similarly on the negative side you've got another 5.6 volt zener transistor and a negative 5 volt supply that unregulated then continues on these two transistors here for the positive and negative side and that's driven from this part of the circuit here you've got an op amp here with a 6.2 volt zener diode up to this uh, supply rail here and that is driving these two transistors which is going to basically regulate the collector of that transistor there and it's adjusted by this trim pot here VR9 for setting that output at plus 14 volts very similarly for the negative side you've got a voltage divider here right across that positive and negative supply rails there into this op amp which basically drives a couple of transistors and very similarly on another transistor here and the collector is regulated at minus 14 volts so basically you adjust the positive side the negative side takes care of itself from there you're on to another couple of transistors you've got a voltage divider we know this is plus 14 volts so we don't actually need to have a trim pot so we've got a voltage divider here and an op amp here with a buffer transistor and that's going to produce a positive 10 volt supply dependent on the size of those two resistors there and similarly for the negative side you've got a voltage divider here and an op amp same sort of idea minus 10 volts so that's the power supply so let's get back to the unit let's power it up and let's see if those power supplies are intact Safety first though, there's no fuse in this unit as I mentioned earlier and we've got some live terminals there so I'm going to mask and tape them off just to keep myself safe. Okay so I've got power on at the moment so first thing I'm going to do is make sure that unregulated DC is okay so down onto the bridge rectifier here we got plus 22 volts and we should have this negative 22 or thereabouts. Yep, yeah, minus 21. So the unregulated is okay by the looks of it. Uh, so the secondary in that transformer appears to be okay. And now I'm going to check the plus and minus 5 volts. And I think I can pick that up via the two transistors or the Zener diodes for that plus and minus 5. So if I go into the emitter or TR12 here, that's on the negative 5 volt rail minus 4.8 yeah that's okay and similarly over at this side I should be able to pick up that plus 5 volts and yep on the emitter of that transistor 4.8 volts that seems okay as well okay the plus and minus 14 volt supply should be a little bit easier to measure uh, it centers around this op amp down here this LM324 which is a quad op amp as I showed in the schematic that's driving the plus and minus 14 and plus and minus 10 volt supply and it's self powered from the plus and minus 14 volt rail so if I go across pin 4 that should be the positive supply and that's at 0 volts and pin 11 should be the negative supply and that's minus 21 volts wow yep something wrong with the power supply with this unit okay so back to the schematic again so like I just did there's the op amps that control the plus and minus 14 and plus and minus 10 volt supply now it's the plus 14 volts rail that's sitting at zero at the moment I'm going to ignore the negative rail for the time being that's controlled from the plus 14 volt rail so we'll get this one working first and perhaps the negative rail will come into place all by itself so here is the plus 14 volt rail here it's driven from this transistor here BD136 the base of it's controlled by this transistor here this one here and direct from that op amp now we're assuming the op amps right at this moment in time so let's jump over with a multimeter and measure the emitter base and collector and see what's going on with it okay so this is TR13 that is the PMP transistor that drives the plus 14 volt rail so we've got emitter collector base so let's have a look at the emitter 
22 volts well that's direct from the unregulated supply so that's okay and the collector yeah that's at zero volts that's why we're not getting any plus 14 volt rail and the base that's at the same potential as the emitter so no much wonder we've got nothing on the collector okay so before I do anything I'm going to measure the plus 14 and minus 14 supplies and let's see for a short circuit especially that especially that plus 14 volt rail so I'll pick up a ground here and on the middle pin there that is the collector of that transistor and 0.2 of an ohm no much wonder the plus 14 volt rail is at zero volts it's shorted to ground so where could the short be well, I think the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to lift that op amp. It's in a socket just to rule it out. There we go. IC socket's quite slack, actually. And it's not that. So I think probably the op amp's okay. So I'll stick it back in for the time being. So how are we going to go about locating this short circuit? Well, some of the op amps and ICs over here, they are connected to the plus 14 volt rail. So I think the easy thing to do to start with is just to lift those op amps there. I think those three there are all powered from that plus minus 14 volt rail. So let's just pull them out and see what sort of resistance we've got after that. Well, as you can see, with the three op amps removed, nope, still getting 0.2 of an ohm down to ground. Okay, so it's not those op amps there, it's not those two ICs here. They're driven from the plus and minus 5 volt rail. So everything that's in a socket, I've already removed. So I think the next thing to do is I'm actually going to try and locate the short using my multimeter and ohms load. I've gone to a central point in the PCB to pick up my zero volts and I'm going to measure in and around the circuit board and measure the resistance down to ground and the lowest resistance will locate the short to around that area so I've got some sort of idea where it is because like I said plus or minus 14 volt go all over the board so just as a test I've got zero volts there and if I just pick up this diode here that goes down onto ground you can see I'm exactly zero volts so that ground plane is actually quite good in this board there's no resistance between those two distant points on the board so it should set me up nicely for picking up the low resistance possible close to the short so if I go on to the transistor like I showed earlier so I've got 0.2 of an ohm on the collector of that transistor there that drives that plus 14 volt rail so now I'll just work my way across the board picking up as many plus 14 volt points as I can and see what I get well step forward a few minutes what did I find out well like I said 0.19 of an ohm there on the op amp itself pin 4 0.29 so it's already started to go up and go away across this side of the board now pin 8 of one of these op amps here 0.37 so the further I get away from this transistor here it seems to be going up in value so I'm thinking the problems in and around this transistor but the issue we've got is none of those pins are tied to zero volts not directly anyway the tab here down onto the heatsink will be grounded and that middle pin is connected to the metal underside of that transistor so is it the case that this insulating kit has gone and we're getting the middle pin shorted right through the body of the transistor onto this heatsink here Well, the nut was very, very tight anyway. Now, the problem I've got now is I can't actually remove the screw from that transistor. I can't push it down far enough. 
so that uh, I can pull off the transistor. So it looks like I'm going to have to take the board out. Ah, but wait a minute. That screw is not actually grounded. That screw is actually insulated. So that's not the problem. The short on that collector is somewhere on the PCB. Ah, but wait a minute. I'm getting a little bit closer. I didn't measure down this corner of the board. It was increasing up at this end. Quite low over here, but it's even lower over here. So what am I getting now? 0.21 on the collector there. If I go down on our transistor, the emitter of a 2N3906 down here, I'm getting 0.14. So let me show you where that is on the schematic. And that's this point here, this plus 14 volt rail here. Now there is no real direct connection through one component or so down to ground apart from this tantalum capacitor here. C38 hidden away in the corner there. So let me locate it. That's a good chance that capacitor has gone dead short. And it's pretty hard to see but it's located right down there. You'll see that blue capacitor there. That's C38. So I'm just going to remove that from the board and replace it. And there is actually another one C39 on the negative rail on that same part of the circuit. So I'll just replace both of them. Well here's the tantalum removed. Confidence is high. And yep there you go. 0 0.09 of an ohm. Yep short circuit. Now I'd prefer not to put tantalums back on boards. So I've got a couple of 47 microfarad 25 volt electrolytics and I think they'll do the job. They're just smoothing the plus and minus 14 volts near that uh, main output there. So let me go ahead and fit these. Okay, new capacitors fitted. Let's take a look at that rail now. Yeah, it's more like it. 1.1k. I think we're ready for a power up again. And let's see what the rails are sitting at now. Okay, ready for power up now. Let's put power on. And let's check that plus 14 volt rail there. 13.9. Perfect. And the negative 14 minus 14.0. Perfect. So now I'll locate the plus and minus 10 and make sure they're okay as well. Now to check the plus and minus 10, there's actually two resistors. And at least one end of both of those resistors will be the plus and minus 10 volt rail. So not sure which end is which, but let's take a look at this one here. And we're getting minus 9.4. That looks like it might be good enough. And R82 down here, positive 9.4. That might be good enough as well. So, next thing, is it working? Well, let me hook it up to my uh, oscilloscope and let's see if we're actually getting an output now. Okay, I've got everything set up. Let me just ground the scope. And I've got the sine wave button pushed in. Let's go into scope output. Yes! <laughs> Great. That's working. How about the output level adjust? Oh, that's a noisy port. Yeah, that's going to need a clean. And the offset control. Oh, got to push the offset button in. There we go. Yes, that's working. And the frequency adjust. And that port's nice and clean. And how about the multiplier? Yes. Yes, that's working good. And let's try square wave. Yep, triangular wave. <laughs> yep, 
That's working. And back to sine wave again. And the minus 20 dB switch. Yep, yeah, that's working as well. So I've got no doubt, actually, this little uh, portable function generator is now working. A short circuited tantalum capacitor. But before I box it all back up, I'm actually going to go away and recap it. There's only three or four caps to change out those large electrolytics and the smaller electrolytics. Let me go and uh, replace them, get it boxed back up, and we'll do a final power up. Once it recapped, next thing we're going to do is put some deoxit in this output level adjust potentiometer, the one it was a little bit scratchy. And what I also want to do is tidy up this front panel, it's actually quite dirty. So I'm going to pull the knobs off, they're actually quite corroded, these aluminium caps to those pots. And the front panel could do with a little bit of a clean, so I'm going to pull the knobs off and give the panel a wipe down, see if I can shine up those knobs and we should be good to go there. So there we go, that's all back up and running. One extra thing I did do off camera, I put an inline fuse from the uh, live input on that IEC connector in the back inside with a one amp fuse in it. And I have cleaned it up as much as I can. It is a little bit uh, discoloured with the, the sun, uh, etc. But it's not looking too bad. So it's another tool for the workshop. I'll keep this one. I really like the form factor, as I said at the beginning of the video. And there is actually an oscilloscope at a Thandar. I think it's an SC110. I had a couple of them back in the day, I remember taking one to Singapore on a job and I dropped it and I knackered it whilst I was offshore. But uh, I would like to pick up another one of them again. I do like the form factor as I said. But this one's up and running, everything's working great. The output level now is working great on the scope as you can see. No more scratchiness now, everything's working as it should. Thanks for watching.